In this video, we'll use Excel to find primitive Pythagorean triples. That is, Pythagorean triples where the greatest common factor is 1. Now, in the last video, we formed a table where the sides of the triangle are listed in the top row and column. And inside the table is the hypotenuse of the triangle. And you can see that we have colored whenever the hypotenuse is a natural number, we've colored it purple. So then we have a Pythagorean triple. Now, I have a version of this table on the next page with really, really small squares. So you can't see the numbers anymore but you can get a general sense of the geometry of the picture and it is kind of interesting to look at the patterns. I actually got the idea for a table like this from the number theory book by Burns, A Pathway into Number Theory, where he does something like this but not using Excel. And so you can see that this line right here are all the triangles that are similar to three, four, five triangles and this one right here are, I think, the 5, 12, 13 triangles. So all of the Pythagorean triples come in these lines. And in every line, the first triple in the line is the primitive one. And everything else is just the same triangle scaled. And in the primitive Pythagorean triple, the greatest common divisor of all of the, the three sides, well, the two sides and the hypotenuse, is always equal to 1. So really, so what I'd like to do here is to color the primitive Pythagorean triples a different color. So when we have a large table like this, we can scroll and find them. So one of, the first thing I just want to do is go back and make the columns a little bit narrower here. And now everything is rounded off. Um, these aren't actually all natural numbers. They're just in cells that are very small. Now, Excel is a little bit funny about the greatest common divisor function because Excel seems to consider that a very special function. So the first thing is that you have to even make sure that it's installed. So you go to the Tools menu and you choose Add-ins. And then up here, the Analysis Tool Pack needs to be checked. And if it's not, you can check it and hit OK. It is checked here, so I'm just going to cancel that. So now we have the greatest common divisor function. Um, but in terms of using that in the conditional formatting, Excel kind of balks when you do that um, because it thinks you're using something from a different worksheet and you're not allowed to do that. So there is a way to work around that. And what we have to do is go to the Insert menu and choose Name and Define. And so we're going to name a new function. And I'm going to call my function relatively prime. And it's going to be a logical function. It'll be either true or false. So that's what, what I'm trying to do. OK, so it's going to be called relatively prime. And now I need to define it. And the way I define it is I'm going to call write the greatest common divisor of the row and of the column. And you might remember from the last video that I made sure that the rows, the row and column number was equal to the side of the triangle. And this is part of why I did it. So when the greatest common divisor of the row and the column is equal to 1, and that is, in our case, meaning the greatest common divisor of the sides is equal to 1. That will mean that things are relatively prime, which is what we want. OK, so just hit OK on that. And then we'll go back, and we just need to add in this relatively prime condition to our conditional formatting, and then and we'll be OK. So my cells are a little too small for the numbers there, but that doesn't really matter very much. OK, so I am back to the conditional formatting. Now what I actually, so I need to add another condition. And what I'm actually going to do is switch. 
And what, I'm going to put my old condition down here. I'm going to copy that and make that the second condition. Um, it works better this way. And the first condition, I think I'll use a dark purple for the primitive ones. Okay, and so now we're going to have two conditions. I'm going to stick the word and in here, which is when I want to use two conditions. I'll need a parenthesis at the end also. So the first condition is like we had before. That was our condition that said that we had a natural number, Pythagorean triple. And then our second condition is just going to be that relatively prime. And I did have to use the underscore. I didn't like two words in there. Okay. And then we hit OK. And there we have it. Um, now the primitive Pythagorean tri triples are in this dark purple. So there's one, 35, hypotenuse is 37, 12, 35, 37. And get some that really aren't so obvious. Here's one. 48, um, 55, and 73. Now I think I put the function back in here. Um, I had just temporarily taken it out so you can get a visual sense of where the Pythagorean triples in general are and the, the primitive Pythagorean triples are in the dark purple. Okay. And that's some data, and you can use that for some investigation on what kind of numbers make up primitive Pythagorean triples. As I said before, there are lots of wonderful patterns there. Enjoy.